Our next guest coming up, by the way, is Sabur Sakazada. He was my translator in Afghanistan. Sabur was able to get his brother out of the country before Biden ended the withdrawal effort, which we believe will come on August 31st. He joins us now. Sabur, thanks so much for being here. I had a chance actually to be with you yesterday here in New York. We filmed an episode that's of Modern Warriors that's going to air on Sunday night at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. called Afghan Extraction. Sabur, you've, you've been involved in efforts first to get your brother out. But then it was a lot more than that, and you're still involved. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, you spoke yesterday so passionately about these American lives that were lost. If you would, share where your head's at on that bombing. Oh, thanks for having me on the show, and good morning to all of you. Um, my, I, I continue to grieve on the loss of uh, both U.S. Marines and soldiers um, that were lost, um, but also on the Afghan side, because some of the folks that were lost were um, allies of U.S. forces and families and simply human beings. Yeah. Uh, so my, my deepest condolences to, to the families. I, I grieve with you. I, I share the pain. Uh, so, I, so God bless you. Um, um, but but uh, this this didn't have to be this way, and and the the pain that we're all going through is as a result of of a failure that took place. Some folks somewhere needs to be held accountable, and 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 while while as leaders as 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 as, as, as politicians we make choices. Uh, and sometimes those are not good, good choices that we make, um, and they end up costing people's lives. People pay the ultimate price. And so it, it, is, it is right also to stand up and to hold accountable themselves and hold accountable those that were in charge of those making those decisions. So right now, things, things in Kabul, it, you know, I, it is very hard to express, to put in words. Um, the, the nightmare that people are living in Kabul, what mm. it feels like to, to, to live. It's, Abdul, it's you were up until moments ago, you were up until moments ago working on an operation to try to get uh, SIV holders through the gate, up until moments before coming on the air. It's still a nightmare. Yeah. You know, the, the gates are shut. Um, you know, we, we, we are... Uh, having a lot difficult time in getting people uh, in through the gate to safety, and partially because we know somebody somewhere uh, controls the gate, um, and whether it's in the state uh, or out in the on the ground or somewhere that somebody's controlling. Because these these Marines, these soldiers that are out there at the front gate, uh, some of, some like the ones that we lost that are out there that are taking command from somebody that's saying, don't let these people in unless they go through me. So the situation have come to the point where we're, we're working around the clock, bunch of group of dedicated people who wants to uphold that promise that we're going to stand up with you. And, and uh, you know, we're working around the clock trying to get these people to the front gate, literally within feet of the gate. And we do not, we are not successful. So it almost is that this whole situation in Afghanistan is that we have to now go beg in front of our politicians to please, please let us uphold our end of the deal. Let us hold, let us uphold our promise to, to the people, to the American citizens, to the green card holders, because they belong to this nation, because so, they committed themselves to this nation. Sabor, I, 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 I agree. I, I'm happy that we're getting out people like yourself and your brother who was an interpreter. I, I'm happy that that's happening. Um, I am hearing reports, we are hearing reports, that other people who didn't serve, um, who didn't do anything, um, who may even be bad guys, um, are also getting through. How frustrated are you that there's not, because of this rush, um, because people weren't vetted back when Pete and others were saying months and months and months ago um, to make sure they're the right people coming through, how frustrated are you that other people are getting to come over? And in some cases, we don't even know who they are. In fact, there was a pilot who said, who was piloting the plane that, that brought, you know, thousands over, and he said he wasn't even allowed to see the manifest. No, it's it's that's that's how daring the situation is in terms of you know uh, the uncertainty and the difficulty. Why do you think, had it been inside a military base where you would screen and and, and you know see the badges of all the employees that mm. work for the United States government and let them through inside a base and then from your from that base you evacuate them, that would have been an easy easy case. But look, 
the situation is right now that everybody from all corners of um, of, of Afghanistan, from Kandahar, from Jalalabad, from Mazar Sharif, uh, from every corner of that country are pouring into Ech Kaya, and they're all trying to get out. Some of our, some of which are not good people. Yeah. You saw what happened. Uh, the guy who, um, who who blew themselves up and the guy who took lives hundreds of people's lives. And so, um, you know, I, I spoke about this a little uh, a little while ago about how this could have been an orderly fashion, how this could have been all avoided. Um, but the, the challenge is that, that you're at stake because you have to go save the, your own kinds, the people that supported you, and you have to do it in a, in a very, very risky way because right. you don't know what's, who's out there. You don't know the invisible enemy. Yeah. And I've said this before. Mm -hmm. Haqqani, Taliban, ISIS, oh, none of these guys, none of these guys are going to hold their promises. They've always been a liars. They've always tried to, um, uh, you know, hide and tricks here and there and betray people. They're not the groups that nobody should trust. Mm. And Abdul, uh, I slip into Abdul because that's what we, 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 we uh, his name in Afghanistan, to pr hide his identity from the sure. Taliban while he was there. Uh, Sabur, and now uh, Haqqani and the Taliban have biometric databases and are using it to hunt down the people that are still there, um, which is an in inglorious exclamation point on this entire exercise. Sabur, thank you so much. Uh, and, and I know you're going go to go right back to hear about your work. brother as well, by this way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations. He's, by the way, in Germany. And what is he doing in Germany? Helping American forces by translating with Afghans that, that can't connect. So still serving as still you got serving. him there. You should be proud, Sabur. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me. Of course.